Hi everyone, welcome back to Miss Allison's Kitchen Kids Cook. Uh, today, it's a little bit more of a complicated recipe. Um, we are gonna make Thunder Cake, and it directly relates to the book Thunder Cake by Patricia Palacco. Uh, it's a great recipe, and um, it uses a secret ingredient you wouldn't normally think would be in cake, a chocolate cake. So um, actually, the story is really about trying to convince, the grandma tries to convince her granddaughter not to be afraid of the thunder. And she totally distracts her by creating a thunder cake to kind of get her um, to think about something else besides the thunder. And it's actually supposed to thunder later today, so when we frost the cake, hopefully we'll have some nice background noise to frost it. Um, but first, um, we're gonna need some special ingredients. Uh, we separate the dry and the wet ingredients in this recipe and um, we can combine our dry ingredients first and then get to our wet ingredients and then put our dry ingredients into our wet ingredients. So um, that's how it's gonna go. So I'm gonna start with the dry ingredients. Right now I have in this two and a half cups of cake flour. And I am going to add my cocoa powder. That's a half a cup. I'm gonna go grab my spoon, hold on. So that's that, and then one teaspoon of salt. And the cool thing about this book is the recipe is right on the back of the book. So if you check out the book from the library, you'll be able to read the recipe on the back. So uh, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. So we'll just kinda. Kinda dripping a little bit. But. All right, that's one and a half a teaspoon. I have to be able to put it right in the container and kind of just use the top to kind of scrape it off. There we go. One and a half. And as far as dry ingredients go, that is it. And now the tricky part is we have to whip up some egg whites. Now I've already separated the egg whites. We have three eggs that we're using in this recipe. So I put the egg yolks in one and put the egg whites in the other. I'm gonna whip that up first to get it ready. And here we go. Here I am whipping up something else today. Hopefully it goes by fast, so I won't keep you sitting here too long. And it depends on how cold it is, but it shouldn't take too long. You have to whip it up and see if it's soft heat. There we go. Do we have soft peaks yet? Not quite. That looks good. You can tell just by it how it's dripping. You see that? Okay. All right. So the next step is to add the shortening. One cup of shortening. Doesn't matter what kind you use. So that is that. One whole cup. And one and three quarters cup of sugar. Now, I'm just going to kind of shake this off and add that. We're going to blend this.
good. All right, shortening sugar. Let me see, the next step is one teaspoon of vanilla. I always gotta add vanilla to everything. You gotta make sure you have enough in your house. One teaspoon of vanilla. And the secret ingredient is tomato puree. Yeah, it's a third of a cup of tomato puree. Now you're gonna have to get these ingredients ahead of time because it's kind of a complicated recipe. I just happen to have some. So, uh, okay, we gotta put the eggs in. We gotta put the egg yolks. Just make sure that, okay. That's nice and mixed in. Now we're gonna fold in the egg whites. There's the egg whites. So we're gonna put a little bit in at a time. When they say folding in, that just means kind of just working it in like that. Now shortening's not the most healthiest thing in the world, but Sometimes in recipes, it makes things taste so good. I'm just gonna put all the rest in and kind of fold it. And then we have to add one cup of water. I'm not really folding in the greatest. I'm gonna kinda. Of... Okay. This is gonna be pretty rich, I can tell you. I'm just gonna kind of blend in a little bit. Gently blend it. And one cup of water. Let me just go get that. Blend that in. So no milk in this recipe. Okay, one cup of water and then I think is our one third cup of tomato puree. down the sides a little bit. Very liquidy right now. So now it's time for the dry ingredients. I'm just gonna kind of lean that in. I'm gonna mix that up a little bit. Now if you don't have cake flour, there is a substitution for cake flour. You can use um, all-purpose flour and then subtract two tablespoons per cup and add two tablespoons of cornstarch. And it makes it lighter. Okay, so here we go. We're going to add this in. It doesn't have to be perfectly mixed. I think it would be okay if it wasn't because it will get mixed up eventually. So here we go. Dry ingredients. I think this is going to be a really delicious cake. I can smell the chocolate. It's so yummy. Pick up the volume a little bit. I can't remember if she actually 
um, uses a blender or if she just hand mixes, because you can hand mix this too. And when you have kids with you, they're going to want to do a little hand mixing. It looks like it's just about getting there. Kind of a cloud of chocolate right now, as you can see. and greased two uh, eight inch round pans. I'm gonna put it in a 350 degree oven. And I believe, as the book says, that you should cook it for 35 to 40 minutes. So let's do that. Let's put it in the pans. I get my handy dandy spatula and we will kind of Split it up evenly between both pans. So to grease and flour a pan, you just put grease in the pan, you put the flour in, and you kind of tap it around so it reaches the edges. Okay, so here we go. This looks really good. You know, I haven't made a real homemade chocolate cake in a long time, but this looks like it's gonna be yummy. And I don't know how that tomato puree is gonna make it taste. I heard it has kind of a fruity flavor, but not really too much. It just tastes really good. So this is gonna to be too much for me to have here at the house. I'm gonna to have to bring it into the library and share it with my library friends. There we go. And it looks like this one's a little bit, a little bit too much. So we are gonna do that. Spread it thin and I'm gonna put it in the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. And you can just kind of keep an eye on it. And we will see that and we are going to frost and decorate the cake in a bit. Hi everyone. Uh, I got my cake out of the oven a couple hours ago. Let it cool fully, uh, removed it from the pans and make sure you put enough shortening and flour in your pan because mine got a little stuck when I was trying to get it out but I managed to save it and uh, it looks pretty good. I uh, decided to put a white frosting in the middle. Now I use a can frosting today. I'm, I'm ashamed to say but I, but I didn't have time to do um, a homemade frosting but I, I have a white frosting in the middle and I am going to cover it with the chocolate frosting. I like to mix it up a little bit when I'm doing my cakes. Now you see the traditional cake, thunder cake, is totally chocolate. So I'm gonna go around the edges and when reading the book, I did discover that the grandmother lives on a farm and she was able to collect a lot of the ingredients she needed from her own farm. And one of those ingredients was her eggs and also the strawberries. I don't have any strawberries growing in um, my yard, unfortunately, but Let's see. Let's see, it's starting to I'm starting to fill the gaps there. See that? Gonna cover up the, the huge gap between the layers. So what we'll do is we'll cover it with the chocolate frosting, and the traditional topping is strawberries, fresh strawberries. There's no shortage of strawberries at the stores right now, so I was able to find some. And I think if you looked really hard, you probably could find some strawberries at a farm stand or a farmer's market in the area. They're just starting to 
they're just starting to um, be picked at this time. It's so quiet in here. It's like a, it's like a uh, library. It's so quiet. So after, right before we serve the cake, we're gonna put strawberries on and cut a slice, but I'm gonna wait for my grandson to wake up from his nap and maybe after dinner and we'll do that now. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And I still haven't heard any thunder yet, so hopefully when you make your thunder cake, it's gonna be a stormy day. Look at that tall cake, look how big and tall it is. Perfect. This should feed at least 12 people or more. Might as well just add the rest of the frosting on top to make it extra rich. There you go. I'm going to show you quickly a picture of the cake from the book. If you can see it, there's Grandma with her strawberries on top. And I'm not sure, eh, it looks like she frosted the sides too. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So we'll come back and do the finishing touches a little bit later, but um, I'll see you in a few. Hi everybody, we're back here in Miss Allison's kitchen doing kids cook and we have our thunder cake. It's ready to be decorated with some strawberries. Now Loxley <gasps> is gonna help me. Are you gonna help me? <laughs> All right, so you're gonna put a strawberry on top. I'll start, and then you put this one on. So this is what the author made for illustration. Has strawberries on top. Now you don't have to put strawberries on top, but that is part of the book, Thunder Cake. Ah, awesome. And Loxley loves strawberries, right Loxley? You love them? Squish, squish, squish. Eh, okay, that's good. <laughs> One more in the middle. And if you want, you can put some down at the bottom to make it pretty. Daddy. All right. One more time. We're gonna finish. Oh, gonna... Daddy. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> He'll be back in a second. Daddy. I am going to cut the thunder cake. I was gonna have him put a few sprinkles on, but you know, he left off on me. All right, come on over. I'm gonna put strawberries cut. on it. He yeah. already did. Are you excited? He is. Wow, this looks good. Yeah, wait, I hope it's good. Wait, wait to get you. Wait, Nanny, get you one. Okay, it looks so tasty. Come on, Nanny. Okay. Oh, look at that beautiful cake. Isn't that dark and delicious? Yeah. Oh, and of course, Lapsy's putting sprinkles on. <laughs> so that's our thunder cake. I actually put thunder sounds on in the background, but you can barely hear them. Uh, we didn't end up having thunder today after all. I thought we were going to, but next time you have a thunderstorm, this is a perfect way to distract yourself from the thunder and not be afraid of the thunder. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you try this thunder cake at home. Right, Loxley? Oh, boy. All right. Say goodbye to our friends. Goodbye.